I'm excited to talk with everyone about one of my favorite topics, software in the automotive industry. Specifically, the growing importance of software to enable advanced safety and performance and create custom driver experiences. In the next decade and beyond, these megatrends will create a magnitude of change across our industry that has not been seen in over a century. This industry trend is known by many different names, one being CASE. CASE stands for Connected, Automated, Shared, and Electric. Three keys that are driving this change are the software-defined vehicle, the explosion of new OEM requirements, and the standardization of hardware and software. According to a study by Accenture, by 2030, software will account for 40% of the total value of the vehicle, up from just 10% in 2015. Some of the functions driving the increased software content include cybersecurity, over-the-air updates, and new services. This trend is also fully represented in the steering system as we see the demand for increased safety, performance, and automated features such as lane keeping, auto park, and others. These features will require even more complex software in our next generation steering systems. A main driver towards this software-defined vehicle is the explosion of OEM requirements for new vehicle programs. OEMs are focusing on software-enabled features that add value to the driver and help to differentiate their vehicles in the marketplace. While feature updates are increasingly added over the air, it also drives more cybersecurity measures to ensure safety and security and safeguard data privacy. In the past, a company like NextGear would traditionally be focused on steering feel, but today we're increasingly focused on communication, diagnostics, the operating system as well. And in the future, the connection to the cloud will drive even more security requirements. In essence, the vehicle is becoming a supercomputer on wheels with over 100 ECUs and multiple connecting bus systems. As OEM requirements and consumer features explode, OEMs and Tier 1s must find ways to offset this complexity by simplifying and standardizing in other areas. These ever-expanding software requirements are driving an evolution in electrical architectures, which in turn is driving the standardization of hardware and the separation of software. This results in two key architectural trends. First, OEMs want to standardize non-consumer facing functions that connect software with hardware. The goal is to reduce application efforts across multiple vehicle platforms. The second architectural trend is the OEM's increased focus on consumer facing applications and differentiators. Let's look at the steering as an example. In the past, an OEM's branded steering feel was driven primarily by mechanical features. But today, we're using software to add a lot of those features to augment the vehicle performance. Features such as torque overlay, crosswind compensation, wheel imbalance rejection, among others. Beyond performance, the introduction of electric power steering also offers the potential for advanced safety features like lane keep assist, automated emergency steering, and more. Some of these features are currently on the road today and others will be implemented in the near future. These safety features drive the need for new fail-safe architectures via redundancy, reliability, and prognostics, which in turn add to the growing number of software requirements. As steering features and functions grow, so too does software complexity, represented here by lines of code. While source lines of code are not a perfect metric, they do illustrate the expanding role of software in the steering systems. Starting on the left in 2007 with the base EPS system with little to no redundancies. Moving along to the right where you see a 10-fit system with extensive fail-safe redundancies and added cybersecurity. Then ultimately a steer-by-wire system in which complex software plays an even more critical role in connecting the driver to the road in terms of safety and performance. The explosion in software complexity is also creating a productivity gap across the entire industry. If left unchecked, this software complexity is expected to rise rapidly with the introduction of new functionality, only slowing once vehicle autonomy becomes mainstream, which we all know is still many years away. And while productivity of the tech leaders is outpacing automotive players, 
it's still not fast enough to bridge that complexity gap. Because the productivity of the automotive software development has not kept pace with the complexity growth, the big question becomes, how do we close this gap? Two initiatives we've implemented at next year to address the industry's gap and improve the efficiency are evolving our software business model and adjusting our approach to software within our product development process. As an example, our global software business model increases productivity by driving operational excellence into our software development process. We continue to grow our global software team in alignment with the industry's shift towards software features and functions. Today, nearly half our technical talent is now dedicated to these future building competencies. That's up from 21% only 10 years ago. In addition to our global software business model, our approach to product development also increases productivity by integrating the mechanical design and the software development simultaneously. Looking ahead, another trend impacting the industry is the vehicle level architecture's migration from distributed control to centralized control. Consumer relevant features increasingly will be moved to higher levels to simplify and coordinate control across multiple actuators. The execution of complex chassis functions will also move to domain controllers. This helps better optimize vehicle response and performance. The cloud also starts to play a more prominent role as it facilitates this exchange of data. Cloud connectivity allows over-the-air updates when feature upgrades can be downloaded from app stores. This means new functions will be launched not only at the start of production, but even after production. These features can then be sold separately during the life of the vehicle and the owner can make the purchase over the air at their convenience. Features including trials, subscriptions, and on-demand purchases can either be activated or downloaded from an app store, just like people do today on their cell phones. Some examples include drive modes such as sport or luxury, driving style and steering feel, driver assist functions, location-based services, and even range extensions for electric vehicles. In the Internet of Things world, the device, and in our case, the vehicle, will stay in permanent contact with its environment, the vehicle owner, and the manufacturer. And the data and insights from those interactions will result in continuous innovation over the lifetime of the vehicle. There's an expression for this. It's called an evergreen product. This means that a vehicle can perpetuate new content over its entire lifetime, which can help OEMs build brand loyalty and enhance the driver experience. Another way software will impact the future of mobility is through crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing will enable data collection from many users and distribution to other data customers. We're seeing it at a base level today with things like Google Maps, where the path turns red when traffic flow is heavy. This will continue to grow exponentially as other third parties like tire manufacturers, insurance companies, and others are able to utilize this type of data. Currently, data marketplaces are being created in the cloud that allow the exchange of this environmental data via standardized back-end interfaces among multiple OEMs and fleets. Other data customers include mapping companies, mobility providers, municipalities, and insurers. As an example, we are working on software algorithms to characterize the traction between the tire and the road surface. This is often referred to as GRIP. Some applications that will be enabled by cloud-supported GRIP prediction include warning and assists, vehicle stability, ride comfort, and even maintenance. Take the driver warning regarding aquaplaning severity, for instance. Here you can see vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication scenario where one vehicle experiences aquaplaning and sends a warning via the cloud to other trailing vehicles. In this example, the vehicle on the left uses various chassis systems to evaluate the road conditions. These signals come from the steering system, the brakes, suspension, and other areas. Our software analyzes these chassis signals and interprets the road conditions, in this case, aquaplaning. That information is uploaded to the cloud and then sent to other vehicles, warning them of upcoming dangerous road conditions. 
This is just one powerful example of real-time safety advancements in motion control. So as you can see, software truly is a key differentiator in the industry. As I mentioned earlier, a main driver towards this software-defined vehicle is the explosion of the OEM's requirements for new vehicle features. The OEMs continue to be focused on features that add efficiencies to their operations and enhance safety and performance for drivers all over the world. This makes it a very exciting time for technology leader like Nextier and other suppliers because we get to solve some of the most challenging technical questions of our time. It's extremely rewarding to know that we are impacting safety, performance, and creating custom driver experiences. As we do this, three things we have to keep in mind. We have to be adaptable, we have to address the productivity gap, and embrace the endless opportunities. The automotive industry will face a magnitude of change in the next decade that has not been seen in over a century. And it's up to us and our industry peers to adapt to these changes, especially in terms of software, so that we can lead the way. In addition, growing software complexity is creating a productivity gap, and suppliers need to find ways to continue to close this gap. We can do this by evolving our business model and adjusting our approach to product development. And finally, advanced software is creating endless opportunities for safety and performance features thanks to over-the-air updates, data crowdsourcing, and vehicle-to-everything communications. As these new benefits come to market, OEMs will be challenged to differentiate themselves and to make their brands stand out. Speaking for next year, I can say we are very excited about the software-defined future and the opportunities to partner with our customers to steer the future of mobility. At the same time, we take pride in our technology that enhances the driver experience and advances safety. Thanks for listening.